Welcome to Backstage with Becca B with special guest Jack Cahill and me. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Backstage with Becca B. On this episode, this Chicago native was the winner of the 2016 Broadway in Chicago, Illinois High School Musical Theater Award for Best Actor, which earned him a Jimmy Awards nomination. Regionally, he's played the roles of Pippin and Pippin, Tom Collins and Rent, Tony in West Side Story, and currently he is on the Moulin Rouge tour, where he is a swing and understudies the roles of Christian and the Duke. Please welcome Jack Cahill Lemmy. So, first of all, I'm going to get right into it. How are you doing? I'm good. We're, we're coming on to the weekend here. So this always, this Friday always feels like Hi. Monday in terms of schedule, because that's like our, we have the five show weekend, so... Other people, yep. it's Friday night. Us, it's like, get to work. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. So is Sunday night kind of like your Friday night on tour? It is, yeah. And then we only have the one day off. So Monday is simultaneously our Saturday and our Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that it kind of works. <laughs> kind of. So, kind of. So how... Have you always known that you wanted to be a theater performer and like perform on stage, sing on stage, entertain people for a living? I have. I've always been a, a big theater nerd. Um, but I, my parents would dress me up as a, uh, a leprechaun on St. Patrick's Day when I was a child, like four years old, and they would have me sing uh, old Irish celtic music and irish tenor songs so they're training the upper register even from from youth so i've i've always known i wanted to perform probably not as a professional leprechaun but uh theater <laughs> seemed like the next best thing so that's pretty much where i began wow do you have like irish in you i do yeah i, I my uh my maternal grandparents are 100 percent, and then my I have one grandparent on my dad's side that's 100 as well, I think. I have okay. to check the 23 and me, but a lot of, lot of Irish. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Irish. So more than me, because like my mom is like, you're like 2% or 1% Irish or something. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. That counts. <laughs> <laughs> Anything counts. <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember what the first show you saw growing up was where you were like, I want to do that. I want to be on stage. I do. I saw um, the first one. Well, I, I saw a lot as a, a child. I, I, I don't remember. But the first one, I was like, whoa. Uh, my parents took me to see Evita at the local high school. And I was like totally blown away. This girl playing Evita was like out of this world. And it was like totally not a high school production. It was insane. And I was uh, totally wowed. And then I also saw a production of Greece at uh, Edge of the Wood in Chicago, where I'm from. And at intermission, I ran up and I signed up for the first acting class because I was so impressed. You're like, I have to do this. I have to be on stage. G gotta do, gotta do Greece. <laughs> I mean, and hey, Chicago has pretty great theater in it. So I feel like yeah, that's it's, it's, very lucky to grow up in the, Ch the Chicago area. Yeah, we have tons of, of uh, theaters equity non-equity we have uh even like some tours that go out of chicago it's, it's a it's a very bustling uh theater town yes exactly so i want to ask what is your favorite regional show that you have ever been a part of and why oh my favorite regional show um i did a show with the griffin theater in chicago called letters home and it was um a piece about uh the war in afghanistan and it was actual letters written from um uh soldiers who had uh some who had passed on some who had not and um just kind of like what that time period was like for them it was really really powerful and uh very well put together and they've been doing it for i think 15 years now the original production won a uh joseph jefferson which is like the chicago tonys um and it's really cool and i think that they, they tour it sometimes as well so if you ever get a chance uh, to see that what so not only did I mean you grew up in Chicago and you got nominated for for Jimmy Awards I saw I did yeah. of, was that out of Chicago that's insane because uh, I yeah, feel like the town school in Chicago like that specific area has to be it like was, super competitive 
they well so they run it through broadway in chicago um the illinois awards and they are broadway in chicago is so good about getting as many schools involved as possible and they um i think my year was like a, they had 275 high schools involved in the awards and they also award like not just actors and actresses but like directors and set design and like they make it like a, a little um high school tony so it was yeah it was very cool they're, they're great about getting everybody involved yeah uh, i mean i there's several people who have participated in the jimmy awards who are like on ongoing tours right now why do you think the jimmy awards have like gotten I feel like they grow and grow more and more every year, like a bigger and bigger deal every year for people to be like, oh, I'm participating in the Jimmy Awards as like a high school student. Yeah, I think it's just because it's such it's such a unique and a, an amazing experience because you have uh, you spend 10 days in New York working with like not just they always say like, oh, you know, these professionals, but really they get like like Broadway stars to come in and like coach you and you're like just like a 17 year old kid it's it's incredible I, uh, Karen Olivo was there my year from Ooh. Moulin Rouge and um Gavin Creel was there my year um Howard McGill like in tons of of like big Broadway names so that was cool to see Eden Espinosa to get like their take on the business and it was interesting because all the takes weren't like 100% positive like it was a very authentic like this is what Broadway is and then um, dance, they, they give you dance training and then you get to perform on Broadway. It's a very, I'm so happy that it exists and continues to exist. Um, and when you, when, you, when you pick like that, um, like, you know, you, you get the, the, the best from every state. Um, you know, a lot of those kids definitely, you would expect to go on to um, do it professionally. And that's, that's probably why they're, they have such great alum. Yeah, and the names you mentioned, they are just like casual, like, oh, I've seen them in like one or two show names. They're like names that people are like, um, yeah, that person is huge. <laughs> yeah, like Tony Award winners. It is so cool. Such a great experience. Did you get any advice from any of them that you'll like always remember for the rest of your life? Oh, let me, let me think. Um, there's such, yeah. Um, that Broadway is not the only, because when I was at, at like 17, I was like, Broadway, Broadway, Broadway. They were like, that you can sustain yourself as an actor, not only on Broadway. And it's very rare actually to go, you know, production contract to production contract that you can um, work in. There's tons of regional houses and you can go show to show to show through that and then go to, to Broadway or a tour, or there's, there's tons of, uh, uh, there's like a variety of work. Um, and also just little tips about auditioning and stuff that I, I still carry with. And I feel like that's so important to know because it's like, yes, like Broadway is huge to eventually to get to, but it's like no one has the same journey in life. Exactly. Yeah, totally. It's all different. So doing the math, you're, pr you're a pretty new graduate. When was your audition for Milan Rouge, the tour? Yeah, so I would have been um, class of 2020. Yeah. Uh, but I ended up leaving uh, school after the first year. I went to Boston okay. Conservatory. And just in terms of my path, um, I wanted to kind of get to it. So I started working uh, regionally in Chicago. I worked at like the Marriott, the Paramount, Drury Lane, Griffin Theater. And then I also did some, some summer stock. I did the Rev up in upstate New York. Um, so I kind of, use that as my uh, college experience. And then um, through appointments and stuff and through my agent, I had an appointment for Moulin Rouge in 2019. It was like kind of like a cattle call back then. And uh, I like sang and I don't know who it was for, but they kind of were just like, no, like I never heard back in 2019. Um, and then I got like a legitimate appointment in uh, the fall of 2021. So a lot, way later, um, after I sent in a, a tape of Roxanne and, and Duke song. And um, then I flew into New York for a callback in late fall, early winter, and just sang through all the material once. And um, then I didn't hear for a really long time. 
and uh, um, had to wait. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was it was over, and then I had a, an offer for another show, and my agent was like, "Oh, we can't quite accept this other show yet because uh, Moulin Rouge hasn't gotten back." And I was like, "Moulin Rouge?" I was like, "That was ages ago," and she was like, "Yeah, you're still, it's still up in the air." And then around Christmas, um, I got the confirmation, and then we started like a couple weeks later. So it was like a really quick turnaround. But I was over the moon. I love love the show. So I was very excited. They made the announcement then on purpose. They were like, "We're gonna give everyone like gifts for Christmas." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Season. yeah, it's also kind of on a a, a rolling basis because people got their offers at different times, and you know, there's lots of uh, moving pieces in casting. So it's not, you know, you don't quite get it all at once. We have, um, some people in the cast who joined, we got cast on Friday and started rehearsals on Monday. So oh, that's that insanity. would blow my mind. That's insanity because then you have to like pack and be like, what am I taking on tour? Which like, right. speaking of which, how do you like, I mean, even if you know ahead of time, how do you go about packing and planning to go out on the road for, I don't know how many months, but like however long your contract ends up being? That's a great question. Yeah, people people never think about that, but that's a great question. Um, so I, I have my car here. Um, so I like just packed the car to the brim and I'm taking that, but uh, most people are flying. So I don't know, I don't know what they're doing. I know that uh, some people have like containers. Some people are like total pros. Like they have like, like this sock goes in this thing and this is, and then we pack it up and then we vacuum it and then it goes down to the size of this and you put it in, a, people really have it down pat i am not exactly marie kondo i can't <laughs> quite give you all the hacks but i i have a full car i can tell you that i mean i stress out about packing for like five days and take like my whole closet so that's kind of what i did yeah <laughs> I would, <laughs> and that's like five days that's not like six months or a year of touring so <laughs> we also do get um big trunks i didn't know about this and we have trunk day and they come and they drop off the trunks and pick up the trunks and like you get like it's great for i gave my trunk away to someone who flies but you can like pack this big trunk with all your stuff and you can put whatever people put like musical instruments so that's very helpful so they they help you out in that regard i mean but then you have to also figure out like when to pack like around rehearsals and stuff and like around two show days and yeah it's so much <laughs> a whole schedule so when you went in to audition, you mentioned singing the Roxanne, you mentioned sending Roxanne and the uh, Duke song. Did you know what you were, what like that you were gonna be a standby for both roles or? Uh, yes, yeah, so it actually was an audition for the, to be a cover, okay. um, which they do. Uh, so you, you go in, they had their principles and then they were looking for coverage. So I was in, yes, yeah, so I did, um, a couple of Christian scenes, a couple of Duke scenes. I did your song as well. It was like a big packet. And they just, I just like went through it and they're like, okay. And I left. And then I was like, well, that's over. And then uh, got the call. And then you were like, okay, I guess I'll wait for however long they made me wait. <laughs> Had you seen the show on Broadway before auditioning? I hadn't seen the show, but I had, um, I had like memorized the whole cast recording i thought it was so fantastic because i loved the movie and then when the cast recording came out i was like on repeat with it but it, i was in chicago so i was always like oh i'll just wait till the tour comes and i'll see the tour but hey. <laughs> hey. uh, but then when i was in new york uh i saw it like it's four times i think during it, rehearsals it's so good it's so good it's so it's good oh my gosh i mean and it takes like what the movie does and puts it on stage so well and seamlessly like it's perfect it's perfect yeah it's really heightened they feel like you feel like you're being dropped right in it's like yeah. and it's like a total the whole audience is like the club too and it's just there's fire it's like acrobats and people in the air it's insane it's nuts it's nuts and the lighting <laughs> is insane it's like i don't know should should get every set award ever they must uh have I thousands of light bulbs on the stage during we were in rehearsal yesterday and I was like looking around and I found new light bulbs there's light bulbs on, under chairs there's just so many lights and the lights are incredible but there's like there's gotta be thousands of them but it's it's a it's a feat for sure oh there's gotta be yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> how when you go in to audition knowing you're gonna be a cover for 
two roles or knowing you're auditioning for two roles how do you keep your nerves down when like they're both lead roles and watching the movie you obviously know both of the roles and both the responsibility of the roles and they're both vastly different yeah I um the nerves are an interesting thing I'm always very I am a, a, not I wouldn't say I'm a nervous person but I I think every actor gets nervous you know so in the in the waiting room for the audition I'm always like standing up and like walking around and like like doing this and like getting in the because you know if they say if you're not nervous you don't care so I don't know if that's true but I definitely you know I I was very um invested in the audition so I was definitely nervous um but once you get in there and like you start you kind of just have to like forget turn it. the nerves off so I kind of like live in the nerves a little bit and then I'm like okay that's over now let's go do it Yes, exactly. So during the rehearsal process, I don't know if you learned a role for a specific role first. I know you've made your Christian debut. It, have you made your Duke debut yet? I have not, no. Okay, so did they tell you like you're going to learn Christian first or did you learn both at the same time? Yeah, so I actually went in and um, I'm also, I also covered two ensemble roles. So I'm technically uh, a swing. I'm not, I don't do traditionally what a swing would do. Um, I, you know, I'm not kicking my face, but I walked in and I was like, are they going to make me cover the dancing swings? I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like sitting around the first day, like, like, oh, and then finally, um, the director came up and was like, all right, so you're going to cover nine to 10, which are the non-dancing, uh, flat tracks. Um, and then they're like, and we'll have you start with Christian first. So I have started with Christian first and then, um, I've done Christian quite a bit. And I think I've done 22 performances as Christian on the tour. And then, uh, yeah, we have, we have different people. We have, we have different uh, people who have started like rotating into new learning, new tracks. And it was just a matter of like, you know, getting everyone the material. So what was your Christian debut like? That's such an exciting debut, especially like as a movie fan and after seeing the show on Broadway, what was it what was that day like and how do you make the role of christian your own on stage uh it was scary because <laughs> it's it's a beast of a of a part so i we unfortunately we had um, a lot of covid outbreaks in toward the beginning of our run but i guess it's good to get it out of the way fast um so then i got the call from the stage manager that our christian was going to be on covid leave um so i was like uh, and I'm from Chicago and I was actually living with my parents at the time because I moved out of my apartment when I got the tour so I had my dad drive me down and I was like <laughs> like in the car and then he was like you got it you got it you're fine and then I had like 12 people in the audience that night who just like dropped everything on a dime to come and then I got to do like 12 in a row so I got to like really kind of like find you know new choices and and kind of live in the part and i had like all kinds of people come because it was my hometown i had people from like my kindergarten class show up at the stage door and i was like oh my god <laughs> um so it was, it was so cool let's do it on the home front it was special yeah how exciting to make to get to make your, your christian debut and lead debut on tour like in your home in your hometown it was so, so special like, yeah i know him <laughs> 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 that's so cool for everyone what yeah. is your favorite song to sing or your favorite I mean yeah favorite song to sing as Christian I mean there's like some like medleys and stuff in the show I know but what's your favorite to sing I think my favorite is probably going to be uh your song Ooh. I think it's just that's one of the most beautiful songs ever put down and that arrangement that they have in there is so smart and incredible and exciting and the orchestrations and kind of like the little story they tell within it too is is so beautiful and i love just the being in the elephant is cool and and it's all um really really brilliant and so i, I think that would be my favorite part and i feel like that probably gets a really big reaction because like i for people who haven't seen the show like it's a modernized version of the movie so like not every song is the same and then like your song is in the movie and on tour and on the tour so people are probably like okay like this is this was in the movie too yeah it's, it's like a common you know 
it's people are very people are expecting it so it's it's nice to to deliver on that <laughs> yes exactly so why i have to ask too because i feel like roxanne is like the is like everyone's like christian song that they're like waiting the whole show to hear why do you think that is again it's in the movie but like i feel like the scene that they put on stage is just done so well intricately well Lighting yeah I, I think it people are so excited because of of nini actually i think the the choreography there is insane she gets dragged by her i don't know what i'm not a dancer i don't know what you would call the move but she's her body is like this and she's on a point I, it looks and they push her like a, a a wheelbarrow onto the stage really fast and she's like and then they throw her up in the air it's so incredible to watch even it's it's almost like even when like you're singing it like you're, you're staying in the in the passion but you're like oh my god that looks incredible um and the lights are going nuts um and then christian's okay too christian's <laughs> okay too <laughs> but he but it's also yeah it's musically very exciting for christian and i think it's just yeah. that's like everything in that scene is so heightened there's nothing that's relaxed about that at all in any regard everyone's given it and i think that's what's why people are looking forward to it speaking of that how much vocal like freedom do you get as a cover to like explore different ways to sing the Christian songs? I haven't really gotten any, like they haven't like put any strong limits on there. Usually it's like, if you do something, usually in rehearsal, they'll be like, mm, don't do that. Or like, <laughs> you know, if you have like a riff, you know, the, the courteous thing to do is, is to go and, and like say, hey, how about this riff? And then you run the riff by him. And they're Justin Levine, our music man. Um, he is, fantastic about being like yeah give it a shot like he really he has like the most incredible ear and the most creative mind even in terms of that like in terms of we were once sitting by the piano and he was like r running down different versions of like roxanne like things you could try and like he's it's he's very open to musical um expression and andrew graham our music director is also very open to it so there's lots of of freedom and people definitely you know take them up on it I mean, and I got to see, the, I saw the show twice on Broadway and then I saw you as Christian in Los Angeles. And I have to say, you truly make the role like your own while sticking to the script and while sticking to the story everyone knows. It was magical to witness. Oh, thank you so much. Of course. And I, was it exciting getting to perform in a big city like Los Angeles on like, I mean, where it's like, all the glitz and glamour on your first week there i think yeah yeah it was so cool it's our biggest uh it's the biggest house the show has ever played to so the so like the first night we were here was the largest audience uh that had ever like at once seen moulin rouge so that was very cool and they've been incredible audiences they've been like super loud and expressive and and like passion we got uh an opening night there's a standing ovation after bad romance yeah. and just like very we feel very supported here and we love the weather doing musical theater in the sun that is unheard of you know usually you're in new york <laughs> in the snow or chicago in the snow um so it's very cool to be here and um outside of the pantages you see all the the stars of of like there is lots of theater celebrities they have like adina menzel and lin manuel miranda um so they, they, def they definitely celebrate theater here as well i thought it would just be you oh. know it's definitely a film and tv town but they they have been very welcoming of the thespians <laughs> oh yeah there's a lot of theater in los angeles is is amazing i lived on it for five years and it's it's so good it's so special oh fantastic i'd love to see some but you know we're so busy yeah <laughs> i mean i the one the venue i used to go to all the time sh shut down but like there's a venue down the street and stuff but oh I so cool yeah so uh you're in the promo for the tour right now or one of the promos for the tour did you know that they were filming a promo the night you were on as christian uh so they were they had scheduled all that I'm, i think we have a professional we have like a uh a really like super high quality like pro shot promo and that is with our full original company 
Um, but I think one of the nights in Chicago, they were, yeah, taking B roll. And then I assumed I would just be cut out of it because I'm not Connor, you know? Um, but it was a funny, funny thing to see, you know, I popped up, I was like, Oh, Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, that'll be a funny little memory to hold on to a little reminder of the, my COVID run. <laughs> I mean, what a cool, like, what a cool gift to have. Yeah, it was cool. It was very cool. And I, I love that, um, that specific commercial they do from Moulin Rouge. They use that audio quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Moulin Rouge. I think that's, their marketing is so, so yeah. brilliant. Sure. Honored to be a part of it. <laughs> oh, good. So I want to wrap up because I know you have to go to rehearsal soon. So why should theater fans come see Moulin Rouge on tour? Not only theater fans, like fans of the movie and fans of, fans of Baz Luhrmann. I think um, they should come because A, we've been without theater for so long. And this is the perfect, like, this is like theater personified. It has everything you're looking for in a Broadway show, like packed in and packed in beautifully. And like, it's just over the top explosive and it, it will fill every theatrical craving you've had over the past, you know, three, two, three years. Um, and also it's a love letter to the movie. It's, it's every like aspect of the movie that you loved is in there. And then it, kind of ups the ante a little bit and it gives you Broadway's version of Moulin Rouge and you already know all the songs so you can come you can sing along and we have just some incredible actors incredible singers Courtney Reed and Connor Ryan who are the leads are out of this world insane if you ever get the chance to see them they're just blow your blow your mind um and I I just think it's good old time and there's also a lot of heart in the show as well so you really can go through your whole array of emotions in, in just two hours and 45 minutes and have a blast doing it so true everyone was so hyped up when i saw saw it every time i've seen it everyone gets so hyped up and i'm curious have you performed with both with uh both the teens who have gone on so far i know nikki hasn't made her debut yet but I have not, I, um, I would just not with Nikki, but I performed, I learned the show with a vet um, okay. and a vet and I have done it now, I think three or four times. And then I've done it with Courtney, I think like 16 times, if that math is right. Ooh. So I, I, it's definitely, yeah, it's, it's interesting because a vet and I like found things in New York in rehearsal that we still do. And then Courtney like is just such a, a pro and so, so is a vet, but such a pro and so like willing to just go with a total new christian you know and she'll she'll play with you she's not like set in her like she's not like this is how we do it she'll like yeah. she'll have fun with you up there and it's a it's such a great experience to be able to do it with both of them such different takes and such fantastic takes on satine and such gracious actresses and it's fantastic Live theater, it's what makes Live it so theater. special is like seeing different people perform opposite each other and how yeah. it changes every night. Absolutely. So real quick, what is your dream show to be in? My dream show to be in is The Phantom of the Opera. Ooh, people I give me hate, that. people give me hate for it. I think it's the best musical ever written. I think it's so fantastic. I, um, I can definitely see it. I, thanks. Yeah, I was like, I saw it as a child on when I was, I, when I, well, not a child, I was like 12. I went with my mom to New York to see it on Broadway. And I like sat in the seat like five minutes after the curtain went down. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I have to do this. Um, so that would be the goal. I think once I've done that, I can, I can retire. <laughs> it, it's mind blowing. It truly is. I feel like people are like, yeah, it's kind of overrated. But I'm like, no, no, no. When you like see it live, you're like stunned by what happens in the show. Yeah, it's running that long for a reason. It's actually, it's very kind of Moulin Rouge-esque actually in terms of like they transport you to Paris and at a time gone by and like just just throw you into that world and like the sets are over the top and all kinds of exciting music and choreography. It's, it's very similar in a, in a strange way. It is, it is. So before I get to my last question, how do you work on self-confidence? in this industry because like it is such a tough industry and I feel like 
you only see like on social media, like you only see like the, hey, I booked this, hey, I booked that. But there are like highs and lows. Yeah, so it's, you, got, you when I was first starting out, I heard like, you know, you hear mostly no, like, and, you, and you'll get used to it. And I was like, I'll never get used to it. Like I hearing no, that's so painful. And then I got used to it. You, you just, you, you go on so many auditions that like, you don't have the, no human being would have the emotional capacity to like take every no to heart. Like you just have, you, you have to be like, oh, I didn't get, oh, that one. Oh, okay. There's just so much, you know, you're, you're just auditioning so much. Um, and then if there's something, I have a rule that if there's something that I really wanted that I got uh, close to, I give myself one day to be sad if I lose it just one day. But if it's something I got like super close to and I almost got it and I lost it, I get one week to be sad and then I have to get over it. Um, so that's my rule for that. And then, you know, it's, it's, you you are your own product, right? So you got to just trust that the product you're selling is a good one. And, uh, if they don't want it, they don't want it On to the next. Yes. I mean, it's, and you can't compare yourself in this industry. I feel like, like compare. Exactly. It's just, it, it, it's a, it, it breaks people. And you got to remember that no one is doing, you know, it's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. No one's doing you, you know? Yeah. So go show them you. They've never seen your take on it. Exactly. You're the only you. So where can people follow you on social media to like keep up with you on tour to find out when you're making your debut as the Duke, which I know you've been probably doing put-ins for. Yeah, we've done uh, some put-in rehearsals. Um, I'm on social. I really, I just use the Instagram. Uh, and that's Jack, Jack K. Halemi. Um, I think that's also the username as well. So just Jack Hey, let me, um, I was on TikTok for a bit during the pandemic, but I kind of gave that up. Um, but yeah, Instagram is where I usually post like upcoming Christian dates. If I get any, or like going to be on tonight. So, Perfect. and yeah. I love that they like that. They encourage you all to like post when your dates are, that's really cool. Yeah. They're, they're so, they're great about, um, but we're allowed to let people know and, yeah that's so amazing how yeah. what is a put in and how like do you prepare to play the duke because like the duke isn't christian the duke is like kind of like someone who i feel like everyone in the audience by the end of the show is like oh don't like <laughs> <laughs> yeah so our um directing team our creative team moulin rouge in general has been like incredible about getting understudies prepared like they you know because with covid and everything and like I think everyone in the industry has realized like how important it is for people to be covering multiple parts and like to have coverage for roles. Um, so they've been like incredible about like having it, like when I went out for Christian, I felt like I'd already done it a million times. Um, so they've been rehearsing me there. And then a put in rehearsal is when the onstage company who comes, who like does the show every night, they come to work and they, we run the show and they'll be in like street clothes or dance clothes. Um, with their mics on but the people who are doing new tracks will be in like full costume so I'll be like doing like evil duke in, next to somebody like with an adidas shirt on so it's kind of <laughs> funny um but they're so the onstage company is also so great about like supporting and like welcoming you in and like if something like if you're in the wrong spot we say shove with love they'll put you in the right spot um and that's pretty much what the put in is and usually it's like a great way to gauge like like, oh, this is how this song sounds on the mic in this big theater. And like, oh, I can't, you know, see my hand in front of my face because these lights are so bright. So I'll have to remember that when I do this. And um, yeah, so that's basically a put in and it's pretty nerve wracking, but mostly it's fun. Are you excited to make your Duke debut and play like the evil guy that everyone, that everyone hates? <laughs> yes. I, oh my God. We love the, we love to play the villain. Um, when I went in for the initial audition, I like got we worked mostly on on duke stuff so i was like oh they'll, they'll probably really like my duke um and we didn't really do a lot of christian Ooh. so i was like oh i'll probably be like they'll probably start me on the duke first but then i was I'm mostly do christian so i'm excited to get back into the swing of the duke Ooh, and i'll put your handles in the lower thirds and in the description so people can follow you and see when you're on as the duke eventually oh great thank you yeah hopefully and lastly chance do you have anything you want to promote or talk about or do you just want to tell people to come see Moulin Rouge on tour? I don't know if I have anything to promote quite yet, but um, yeah, Moulin, I've been pretty busy with the show. Moulin Rouge on tour 
at the Pantages Theater running through September 4th, 5th, 4th? September something, man. Early September. Yeah. <laughs> and we were eight times a week, so you got plenty of opportunity. And uh, if you want to come see me, check me out on social media and I'll post when I'm on. Perfect. And I'll also put the links to buy tickets in the, the description. Uh, yes, that's important. Yeah. <laughs> so... Thank you so much for joining me to talk on my interview show today. And Thank you for having me. This has been a ball. Of course, of course. I really loved your portrayal of Christian. So I, ha I had to reach out after. Oh, I thank you. Started. Thank you for coming. And thank you for the support of the show. Thanks for watching this episode of Backstage with Becca B. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Or for more exclusive content from this interview and more, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Backstage with Becca B. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give me a five-star rating. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.